What's up everybody, my name's Kirk. Welcome to Connect. Can you do any awesome card tricks? Okay, I have one card trick that I can do. You wanna see it? Here we go. It goes like this. Well, at Connect HQ, Dot's working on her card tricks and God's working on something way bigger. Miracles. Now we have a point that we need to learn. I'm gonna say it. I need you to repeat it after me. Are you ready? Here we go. Jesus is working miracles every day. Fantastic job. All right, now it's time for my favorite part of Connect and that is worship. Let's go to Connect HQ right now to learn more. Guess what time it is, do you know? It's time to connect to God together by singing and moving to music. Even though sometimes I may not feel like dancing or singing, it's not about how I feel. God deserves all of our worship all the time. He deserves our best. He deserves all of our thanks. So get up and let's connect to God together. I'm 
Becoming the person you call me to be A child of God, a life redeemed So I set my eyes on you Jesus, I'm ready
Whoa. Really? Is this your card? No, but that was a great try. Oh, okay, uh... Yeah. For my next trick, I will magically transform this orange into... Do you need help? What are you doing back here? Oh, she... Amazing. Amazing. Do it again. We are Connect HQ. Every day we help the people of the world live God's way. We look for the links, make the connection, and you never know what might happen. My name is Kat, and this is the time Connect HQ learned about one of God's greatest miracles. For a second there, I really thought you had turned that orange into an apple dot. Let me learn to do a simple card trick before you start expecting me to perform miracles. <laughs> Hi, welcome to Connect HQ. I'm Kat, this is Dot, and that's Jake. What can we do to help? My name's Ethan, and I've got a problem. A while ago, my dad was in a really bad car accident. Oh no. I'm sorry to hear that. Oh, he's okay now, but for a while we didn't know if he would get any better. His legs were beat up pretty bad. All the doctors told him that he would never walk again. But now he's all right? Our family and our whole church prayed and prayed for my dad. And a week later, dad left the hospital, walking on his own two feet. Wow. That's a miracle. That's what mom and dad say. God performed a miracle. But my friends at school don't believe me. They say the doctors must have gotten something wrong. They say miracles don't happen now. If they did, there wouldn't be so many bad things in the world. What do I tell my friends? What's the truth? We're here to help, Ethan. Why don't you and I stay here and find a Bible link to help you with your problem? Jake and I can go look for the other links. Sounds great. Let's go. Isn't this just so exciting? What? Ethan got to experience a real life miracle. I think that is so cool. Mm hmm I would love to see a miracle. Isn't God amazing? Do you have any ideas for the verse link? What's wrong, Jake? Nothing. I'm just not so sure about this whole miracle thing. You're not? I mean, I know Jesus performed miracles in the Bible, but... You're not sure if he still performs miracles today? Last year, my grandmother got sick. It surprised her whole family. She had been so healthy. I prayed and prayed for her to get better, but she still ended up passing away. Oh, Jake, I'm so sorry. It's always hard when bad things take us by surprise, but nothing takes God by surprise. He's always in control. What if God doesn't do miracles anymore? What if that was just something for Bible times? Jake, God might not answer our prayers the way we think he should, but I believe that God still performs miracles. If I could just see a miracle myself, maybe I would believe. I bet you would. I bet you would. And she said that in her 30 years of being a doctor, she had never seen such an amazing recovery. And my dad said, it's all God. God gets the credit. Incredible. To experience a miracle like that and to see what God has done for you. My friend Joseph said he doesn't believe in magic and hocus pocus. <laughs> A miracle isn't magic. It's God showing his supernatural, incredible power to do something amazing in your life. Something that'll bring glory to his name. What do you mean, bring glory to his name? It's when we celebrate God and give him credit for what he's done. Like when your dad told the doctor that his healing was all God. But what about all the bad things in the world? People make wrong choices, and wrong choices create a broken place. And in a broken place, bad things happen. But God is always doing miracles. But what do I tell Joseph and the rest of my friends? Joseph. Joseph, that's it. You can tell them all about Joseph. This is the story about the God who loves us in the Bible. We find truth and purpose to love God and love others. We're searching God's word for things to discover. Through history and poetry
like this This book is alive Genesis Jacob had twelve sons, but he loved his son Joseph the most. He gave Joseph a special brightly colored coat. Joseph's brothers were jealous of him. They hated him. Joseph also had special dreams. In my dream, we were tying up bundles of wheat, he said, and your bundles bowed down to mine. Joseph's brothers hated him even more. Joseph had another dream. The sun, the moon, and eleven stars bowed down before me. His father and brothers grumbled. Are you saying you will rule over us? One day, Joseph's brothers were in the fields watching their sheep. They saw him coming to see them. They planned to kill him and put an end to all his dreams. It would be wrong to kill our brother, said Reuben. Let's throw him in this empty well. So they tore off Joseph's special coat and threw him into the well. Ishmaelite traders came by on their way to Egypt. Let's sell Joseph as a slave to the Ishmaelites, suggested Judah. So the brothers sold Joseph for 20 pieces of silver. The brothers dipped Joseph's coat in goat's blood and showed it to Jacob. My son is dead, he wept. Meanwhile, Joseph was taken to Egypt, but God was with Joseph. In Egypt, the Ishmaelites sold Joseph to Potiphar, one of Pharaoh's captains. God blessed Joseph and made him successful. Potiphar put Joseph in charge of his whole household. Joseph served Potiphar well. Potiphar's wife wanted Joseph to sin against God. Joseph refused, so she lied about him. Potiphar believed her, and Joseph was thrown into prison. In prison, Joseph met two of Pharaoh's servants. They each had dreams, and God showed Joseph their meaning. Joseph's explanations came true. The cupbearer was released, and the baker was hanged. Two years later, Pharaoh had two troubling dreams. The cupbearer remembered what Joseph had done for him and told Pharaoh. So Pharaoh sent for Joseph and told him his dreams. God showed Joseph the meaning of Pharaoh's dreams. For seven years a lot of food will grow, said Joseph. So store up food because seven years of famine will follow. Pharaoh was impressed by Joseph's wisdom, so he put Joseph in charge of storing up all the food. Apart from Pharaoh, no one in Egypt was more powerful than Joseph. Joseph's brothers went to Egypt to buy food. They bowed before Joseph, but did not recognize him. When he saw that they had changed, he told them who he was. The brothers were terrified. You meant to harm me, Joseph said, but God used that for good. Bring all of our family to Egypt. We will have plenty to eat. Wow. Joseph had to go through a lot of bad stuff, being sold by his brothers, getting thrown in jail. Right, but God uses terrible things to create good. That's a miracle. I don't understand. God did instant miracles in Joseph's life, like when he told him about the dreams of the baker, the cupbearer, and the pharaoh. Instant miracle. That's the kind of miracle my dad had when God healed him. Right, but there's another type of miracle where God takes something that was meant for evil and turns it into something good. Like with Joseph, it was definitely evil that his brothers sold him and he ended up in Egypt. But because he was in Egypt, he was able to tell Pharaoh to store up food. Many people's lives were saved because of Joseph. Including Joseph's family. The world is a broken place and bad things happen, but God is always in control. And he's still working miracles. Explain it to me again. Do you believe in the miracles that God performed in the Bible, right? That's right. I believe in miracles, but I just think they may be a thing in the past. And I want to show you that miracles still happen. In fact, Jesus is working miracles every day. Jesus is working miracles every day. That's right. We can read how God parted the Red Sea for Moses, and how Jesus fed 5,000 people with two fish and five loaves of bread, and when Jesus turned water into wine. You just need to see one of these miracles for yourself. Sounds good, but that still does not explain what all this stuff is. 
This stuff is your miracle in the making. Come on, let's start by turning water into grape juice. Is it clear grape juice? No, still water. Am I supposed to say something? Nope. Moses just raised his staff and the Red Sea parted. Fish sticks and dinner rolls. It's the best I could do. Now, when Jesus tore apart the bread and the fish, they multiplied, feeding thousands of people. It, it looks like the same amount of food, only in smaller pieces. Walking on water. You've got this, Jake. <sighs> well, that did not work. That's a good verse. I think it will make a great verse link too, but let's wait to see what Dot and Jake have come up with first. Whoa. Jake, why are you barefoot? And what happened to your pants? Not a miracle. Huh? I know God still works miracles today, but we weren't able to recreate any of the miracles in the Bible. We couldn't part the water or walk on the water. The fish sticks were tasty, but they definitely didn't multiply. Dot. We don't get to decide when God does miracles in our lives. He does, and He knows best. The only miracle I wanted was for my grandmother to get better, but she didn't. Why doesn't God just do miracles to stop bad things from happening? I'm sorry to hear that, Jake, but Kat found a good Bible verse that might help. It helped me. It's from Romans chapter 8, verse 28. It goes like this. Romans 8, 28. Romans 8, 28. In all things God works. In all things God works. For the good of those who love Him. For the good of those who love Him. In all things, good and bad, God is not surprised or taken off guard. He's always in control and knows exactly what's going to happen for the good. Then why don't we see miracles all the time? They're always there, but you might just not see them. Some of the best miracles are when God takes a bad situation and turns good out of it. Like what God did for Joseph. When we face difficult situations, we can always bring our worries to Jesus. We may not know what kind of miracle He's going to work in our lives, but we can trust that He will always bring good out of everything. It really is true. Jesus is working miracles every day. Thanks, Connect HQ. I know just what to tell my friends. Some miracles are instant, like my dad's healing, and some miracles could take years, like when God's working the good out of the bad. But miracles are happening all around us, every day. A miracle is something amazing that God does with His supernatural power to bring glory to His name. You may wonder if miracles only happen in Bible times and if God is still working miracles in our lives today. But the Bible verse tells us that God is always working. Say it with me like this. Romans 8, 28. In all things God works for the good of those who love Him. Because of wrong choices and our broken world, bad things happen but God is working in all things. Joseph went through a lot of bad things. His brother sold him as a slave. Potiphar's wife lied about him and had him thrown in jail. But all the time, God was working things for good. In the end, Joseph experienced the miracle of being reunited with his family and being able to give them the food they needed. 
Ethan's father received an instant miracle when God healed his legs after a bad car accident. Most of the time, we're only looking for the instant miracles. But when we only look for instant miracles, we might miss one of the greatest miracles, God using all things, even bad situations, for something good. When bad things happen, we have to remember that it doesn't surprise God. He is in control. When bad things happen, we can always turn to Jesus. He cares about you. Don't lose hope. Jesus is working miracles every day. So keep believing in miracles and trusting in Jesus. And don't forget, Connect HQ is here to help you. And then his coworkers started following Jesus. Hey guys, what are you talking about? Some of God's miracles, the ones he's performing here and now. I've been thinking about my grandmother a lot today. Even though I still feel sad and I miss her, God did something good with it. Really? Like what? After she passed away, my family had to clean out her house. My uncle found this diary where she wrote about how much she loved Jesus and how he changed her life when she started following him. This is the best part. After my uncle read my grandmother's diary, he decided to start following Jesus. And then my aunt and all my cousins started following Jesus too. Before that, they wouldn't even go to church or listen when I talked about Jesus. Wow, God performed several miracles there. It's really amazing to me that God can take the bad from situations and bring good out of them. My turn, I have one. So one time when I was little, I... Is this your card? No. Is this your card? No. Alrighty. Uh... I forgot what my card was. Jesus is performing miracles every day. The greatest miracle of all is that we can be forgiven of the wrong choices we've made and become followers of Jesus. If you want to make that choice, you just need to remember the ABCs. A, admit. Admit that you've done wrong and ask God to forgive you for disobeying Him. B, believe. Believe God sent Jesus to take the punishment for your sin. Trust that you are forgiven because Jesus made you right with God. C, choose. Choose to spend your whole life depending on God's power to help you say no to sin. As you live and love like Jesus, tell others God is your leader and number one friend. If you decided to follow Jesus, be sure to talk to a parent or a leader you trust. That is the most important decision that you can make. If you wanna know more about that, I want you to make sure to talk to a trusted adult before we finish today. All right, now we have a verse that we need to learn. I'm gonna say it, I need you to say it with me. Are you ready? Here we go. Romans 8, 28. In all things God works for the good of those who love him. Fantastic job. All right, now a baker can take things that are kind of gross on their own and turn them into something really tasty. I'm gonna put a list of raw ingredients on the screen, and I want you to talk about what they taste like all on their own, and try to guess what a baker can do with them. Go ahead, pause the video, and play the game. mixes ingredients like those to create something great, a chocolate cake. It reminds me of how God miraculously works all the bad, good, and just okay things in our lives together for good. Now we've got some fantastic questions for you and your family to answer. Thank you so much for joining me in Connect and I will see you later.